And hi, everybody. Uh, as Purnima said, I'm Michael Slisky. I'm a product management director here on Google Play. And I'd like to kick off the day by sharing a few thoughts with you about the state of play and the amazing momentum that we've been seeing with Android, with Play, um, and with you guys' app developers recently. Uh, I'd also like to highlight a few uh, key trends uh, that I think uh, we've really been focused on and are really relevant to you guys, and then point out um, a few things that I think you'll see throughout the day. So let's get started. As I think you guys all know, Android has become an incredibly popular platform. And as somebody who's been at Google since we launched the G1 back in 2008, it's incredible to see over just six short years how we've gone from a few thousand devices to now Android accounting for three out of every four smartphones in the world. More recently, we've seen amazing momentum on tablets with Android now accounting for three out of every five tablets in use in the world. And Android's not just popular, it's also become increasingly powerful. At this point, over 85% of devices are running Android 4.0 or above. But as you guys know, the Android opportunity is not just about market share, it's about the aggregate impact. And we crossed an amazing milestone this year we now have over 1 billion active Android devices in the world, a number that I find just staggering. And that growth has continued to increase in velocity over time, and it's projected to continue into the future. Taking a regional view here at Europe, uh, the Middle East, and Africa, EMEA forecasts are for smartphone sales to double over five years. You can see Android here is at the blue on the top. Um, and so Android is capturing the vast majority of those increased sales going forward, and the same is true for tablets. With tablet sales continuing to increase and Android capturing the lion's share. But as you guys know, the Android platform story is not a regional story. Android has really become a truly global platform. We now have 60 device manufacturers selling Android devices all over the world. We have partnerships with 329 mobile operators. And they're distributing devices in over 190 different countries. And I think that's one of the, the first themes that I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, which is the increased internationalization of Android. And particularly a focus that um, we've had recently, both on Android and on Play, around emerging markets. Despite all of that growth, only one out of four people in the world today have a smartphone. And we at Google are focused on how we can bring the next five billion people online. And one key effort to do that is Android One. Android One's an effort to bring high quality devices to emerging markets like India, like Indonesia, like the Philippines, and South Asia. And with Android One, we're trying to make devices that have fast processors, smooth interactions, and we've actually partnered with device manufacturers and silicon chip makers to create reference designs to allow these to not only be high quality devices, not only powerful devices, but also affordable devices, and devices that have features that are particularly relevant in local markets. For example, in India, FM radios. And these are not only high quality and affordable devices, but they're also devices that will always run the latest version of Android which you guys know is important. Here on Play, uh, we build the distribution layer and the commerce layer on top of Android. And so the Android platform expansion into emerging markets through Android One and other efforts uh, is a tremendous opportunity for us. And we have really been prioritizing making sure that users in all those different countries can pay. Whether it's your paid apps, whether it's in-app billing, whether it's subscriptions, we want to make sure that all of those people have a seamless and frictionless way to engage with your apps and services. And so we've spent a ton of time over the past couple of years uh, making sure that all these markets are payments enabled. Earlier this year, we launched PayPal. And we have PayPal live in 12 different markets, another way to pay in a wide region. We've seen increased popularity of direct carrier billing. And we've been uh, focused on expanding that internationally as well. We now have direct carrier billing in over 25, uh, in 25 different markets. 
And that covers about half of the Android user base. We've also been working really hard to get our gift cards program rolled out in as many markets as possible. Um, and in under two years, we're now at 18 different markets with gift cards. And I'm really happy to be able to say that all of that work seems to be paying off for developers. We've paid out over $5 billion to developers through Google Play. It's become a really big opportunity. And it continues to grow year over year. We paid out more than two and a half times as much last year as we did the year before. And we're looking forward to increased growth in the, growth in the future. So uh, looking forward a little bit, we're around the corner from the Android L release. And I wanted to highlight a couple of trends with L that I think are particularly relevant to you guys. One is material design. So with material design, we challenged ourselves to come up with a new visual look for Android that would synthesize the classic principles of good design with the possibilities that technology affords us. And so material design brings a new look and feel, new principles of motion, and better animation to Android. It is really beautiful. It's a joy to use. I think you guys will really like it. And I think now is a great time with the L preview out there to go look at how you can bring material design into your apps. Another major trend of L is expanding Android, as Purnima said, from phones and tablets into a new wave of device types. I think we're just on the brink of this. TVs and wearables and auto. So with Android TV, we're bringing Android into the living room with big screen apps and games and content. And not just a streaming service, but also a platform on which you can build incredibly rich visually stunning games, and we think it's something that has mass market potential with a variety of form factors and multiple manufacturers. And best of all for you guys, it's less work because it's a simple incremental expansion to your Android app. Second platform I wanted to mention is Android Wear, uh, which brings Android onto your watch. Devices like this Moto 360, which went on sale just this week. Uh, this is a really beautiful device. There's a range of devices out there now. And I can tell you that it's really transformed the way that I interact with apps and services that I've used over a period of years, um, which I think for every app developer is an opportunity to think about how you can bring your apps and services onto the wrist. Right? So Android Wear organizes your information. It surfaces to you without you even having to ask. And so whether it's messaging or appointments or weather notifications, um, who knows what in the future, but I hope you guys will dream up the use cases uh, that make this a magical device. And then lastly, Android Auto, which brings Android into the car. Android Auto is designed with safety in mind, with a simple and intuitive interface, with integrated steering wheel control, with integrated voice control. And you can connect your phone to get your contacts and your messages and your music all in the car without having to take your eyes off the road. And I'm really excited about this, particularly with over two dozen auto industry partners. So I think, again, as we look from this transition from phones and tablets to TV and wearables and auto, this big opportunity, both for us and for you guys, because Android and Play provide the platform, but you guys are going to provide the apps and the services that actually make these devices useful and worthwhile. So, an expansion of types of apps that you can build, a new design language, a new range of devices, new markets around the world. So how do you take advantage of it? And so we're going to talk about that throughout the day. But I wanted to kick off by highlighting uh, five key points that are things that we think about ourselves every day as we're building apps and that I think you guys want to think about as well. So first, as I mentioned, get ready for the L platform release. L is one of the biggest releases we've ever done. It not only brings a new UI paradigm, it brings a new runtime, enhanced notifications, and over 5,000 APIs, which means new capabilities for you guys, things that you can use to build new types of apps that haven't existed before. Second, capitalize on these new device opportunities. Right? We're on the verge of the next wave of devices, and right now is a time when it's really a greenfield opportunity. The L preview release is out there, and so it's a great time to start thinking about how you can define what a device like this or what having the Android platform on your 
tablet, your wrist, and your TV means, what kind of services can exist over the next few years that don't exist today? Third, it's a great time to go global. There's over a billion devices in use around the world, and whether we're sitting in California or in London or in Tokyo, our users are everywhere. And as we work to bring those next five billion devices online with efforts like Android One, I think you're gonna see that it's only gonna become more international. And so the opportunity is there to think about the local unique needs of your users, whether they're in India or Brazil or Indonesia. Fourth, if you're building games, integrate Google Play Game Services. Google Play Game Services has grown in a short time to become the fastest growing mobile game network of all time. We've added over 100 million new users in the last six months alone. So it's an opportunity to get a lot of the features and the infrastructure that you would otherwise have to build for yourself. And it's an opportunity to increase your visibility, both through the games network and through the store. And we hear consistently from developers that integrating game services and using features like achievements, leaderboards, quests, gifts, multiplayer, the whole range of services helps them increase engagement with their users, retain their users for longer, and extend the life of their game. And fifth, critical for us and for you guys, a relentless focus on quality. So you guys know your users, you know that quality is important for them. It also really impacts how well your apps monetize. So for every star, every additional star you get in your rating in the Play Store, we see a multiplier effect on revenue to developers. So I encourage you to maximize your marketing money and make sure that you're engaging and retaining those users. And so finally, I just want to mention that Google is here to help. Throughout the whole life cycle, we really honestly spend all of our time every day thinking about how we can improve the tools and the services that we make available to you guys and how we can make your lives better as app developers. Whether it's in the store, whether it's making payments easier for users, whether it's making devices available in more places to more different types of users, whether it's building out the developer console, providing tools like A-B testing to you, this is what we do every day. And so I'm really looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible, hearing your feedback, hearing your questions, hearing your ideas, um, and thank you.